Can you guys hear me? Perfect. OK, so thanks for joining me. Uh, this is my first talk at OCP. I'm very excited to, to be here and uh, to talk with all of you. I mean, I've seen, I see some familiar faces here. So just to give you a super quick introduction, I'm a director of problem management at Barefoot. Uh, prior to Barefoot, I've been at VMware, part of the NSX team. I've been at Cisco. I've been in multiple riverbed, multiple networking companies. So always been in networking. I'm very passionate about it. So. So today we are going to talk about inbound network telemetry and uh, you know why we think it's a very powerful tool for for data center especially for you know troubleshooting operationalizing the data center make it more efficient before we jump on the telemetry piece uh, just a little bit of background of what barefoot does and how this relates back to the you know OCP sonic community so with barefoot we ship we productize you know, our chip called Tofino. There are multiple speed and feed of the chip. That chip is part of multiple ODM and in future OEM systems. So you see here on the right some of the platform that are you know, got upstream as support into Sonic, specifically WNC, Edge Core, the Wedge 100. So all of these are now available into Sonic. You can go into Sonic, download binaries as Arkady explained this morning of this platform. By no means, this is like an exhaustive list. We are working with other ODMs uh, to onboard them on Sonic. And so this list will go and expand going forward. We have, uh, of course, uh, you know, we are very programmable. Everything, uh, we believe programmability should be extended at everything you do at the data plane level. And we use P4 and we have a compiler which makes us a true, a true uh, programmable platform. On top of this programmability, you can build a number of applications. And today we are going to focus on telemetry and uh, how you can use all this uh, visibility that you get now into the data plane. And last but not least, we are part of an ecosystem uh, of you know, part of the P4.org organization. And P4.org is a consortium, non-profit consortium, which we participate on. Uh, it does, it helps us uh, conversating with other vendors, with other, with customers, with technology partners about use cases, expand our visibility on uh, on the use cases and things that people would like to do. And in fact, you know, I just want to highlight that you know we have been participating very actively. There are four working groups in P4.org, uh, working groups that go and define the language, the architecture, the API. You guys have heard about P4 runtime. And there is also a working group that, that talks and defines the applications. What are these applications? I see many people here that are participating to the working group. So we have been discussing about telemetry, but not just telemetry. There are other applications that you can think uh, once you have programmability. Specifically on INT, there are a couple of talks that I just want to point out here. Uh, there was a recent talk on INT from, from Benfaf and and Chang from, uh, from the Barefoot team talking about how you can extend INT into OVS, which makes now telemetry available at the virtual switch layer. And uh, last but not least, we are also participating actively in, uh, in the ITF community to take some of these uh, inbound telemetry concept to the standard. So think about RFC level. ITF, getting stuff through ITF take a while, but you know, you know, definitely it's a requirement for some particular conditions. So talking about the use cases for network monitoring, why it is important. I don't have to spend a lot of time on this slide. You guys know today's monitoring using SNMP or you know, traceroute, ping. Those are you know, very you know, elementary, elementary tools that are not by, by no means enough accurate to troubleshoot today's network, especially if you have congestions. Think about microbursts. These are events that can last like a few microseconds. So if you don't have and these tools give you the granularity of milliseconds at best. So it's very hard for you to go and capture these events unless you have the right tools and visibility. And with no visibility, you have all sorts of issues. A lot of costs for the, for the customers to go and troubleshoot this network, root cause, the problems. The more time they spend, the more time, the, the more it costs to them. So let's take a look at INT. And we call, I'll, call, I'll keep saying INT, by INT I, I mean inbound network telemetry. What we want to answer with inbound network telemetry? First, we want to answer how that packet got here. So which path that packet take to the network, which is not an obvious question and answer today because of ECMP and multiple other techniques like flawless switching, for example. 
Second, and so be able to tell that the packet took that specific path in the network and, uh, and during that uh, you know, journey, it spent so much time at every hop in the network. So if you have congestion, that latency will go up and that is a flag of problems that you may have. Second is why this packet got here and is, goes back to the fact that what, which rules were used to forward that packet. Was a specific ACL applied? What routing lookups were done to forward that packet over? And other questions are more related to, I would say, the performance characteristic of the network. So, for example, if you have congestion, be able to tell if any op in the network has, you know, exceeded watermark in the latency. So, for example, you know, baseline latency for a switch could be a few hundred nanoseconds. And if you see like, you know, microseconds or more, that means that you have, you know, definitely you have a problem. When you have a congestion and you have something like a microburst, uh, find out who created that specific congestion event. Who was the aggressor flow? In this case, who was creating that microburst? And who were the victim flows? What are the applications that are suffering because of that microburst? So we call this like congestion analysis. So be able to tell when you have a congestion, be able to do the zoom in and find out what were the problems and what was the impact. So of course, we want to answer all these questions. At Barefoot, we, uh, we want to do this for every packet in the network. We call this like the foreground truth questions of telemetry and we want to answer them uh, at every part for every packet and a line range speed. So INT, uh, we discuss about INT. So INT, with INT, what we do is instrumenting metadata into the packet. And, and, and we want to do this without changing anything at the application layer. So think about the instrumentation that the network does should be orthogonal to the application. The application should not know anything about it. And what information you put depends on the use case, and that's where programmability comes in. Uh, you know, programmability is not the same thing for every customer. So for some customers that are interested in congestion monitoring, you, they will carry like queue data, they will carry transit latency information and so on. Other customers that are interested in, you know, finding specific use case around intent-based networking, they may carry like ACL rules or lookup rules. They may carry this information into packets. But eventually, uh, in this type of INT network, I, I always describe INT as, a, I like to describe it maybe because of my background, as a VTAP function. You always have an ingress point and an egress point. That ingress point is called the source. That determines uh, instruments the packet with the initial instruction set and tells the rest of the network what metadata should be added into the packet. So every subsequent device, which is called the INT transit, will read that instruction set and add the right metadata. And then at the end, like in a VTAP function, you uh, decapsulate the metadata. You take it out, you send the original packet to the application layer, and you send that metadata out for, for analysis. So uh, I think I've, I've seen you know, a few talks from a uh, from, from couple of customers that have implemented the early INT uh, functionality. So I'm referring to Alibaba's talk this morning and what issues and problems you know, digesting all this metadata represents. So there is a lot of metadata that gets generated. And so through some of the initial POCs and uh, you know, uh, production deployment, we learned a few lessons. So we came up with the additional, I would say, superset functionality that we can uniquely do with the chip. And uh, those are more related to data plane functions that, that make that solution, first of all, smart, what we say, uh, able to uh, identify what needs to be instrumented, which is very important. Of course, you know, you can monitor every traffic in the network, but if you are looking at this technology for troubleshooting, you want to have the ability to say, you know, I'd like to monitor this application. Maybe my RDMA, uh, ROCCHI traffic, which is more, you know, uh, mission critical. Second, to make it smart, you want to be able to have intelligent triggers, which means fundamentally, you don't want to send in this network, you have billions of packets per second flying by, right? You don't want to send billions of reports out. 
So with intelligent triggers, the data plane, thanks to the programmability and the flexibility, can generate reports only when anomalies are detected. So there is a dedupe function at the source, which now makes that telemetry report, you know, interesting data that you really want to see and reduce the amount of traffic that you need to ingest. And then, of course, in some of these conditions, uh, having that accurate, uh, like nanosecond, is very, very important. Uh, building load balancing, if you want to scale out that you know, monitoring cluster, you know, that's another important thing. Programmable, that's very, very important. So you, know, it's, you want to make this programmable because supporting on the, on the switches, it's great, but you know, telemetry makes sense only if it's available everywhere. So we are partnering as Barefoot uh, and also in the p4.org community, there are a lot of smart NIC vendors that are implementing INT. So if you come to our booth, you will see people like, you know, Netronome, Netcoop, Xilinx. Those are all traditional programmable platforms that are implementing it. Think about a use case where you have virtualization or where you have VNF of offloading, and you would like to understand what's the impact of, uh, uh, of, of the performance across the overlay and the underlay, correlate this information together. So it's important to have SmartNIC support. And OBS is also important, you know, uh, there are a multitude of uh, virtualization overlay SDN technology that use OVS. And so it's important to have support there to extend INT really, you know, in all these type of use cases. Real time, that's also another important thing. Uh, I think what Hayong was saying before is the capability of generating uh, telemetry data without burning CPU and uh, with the response time and the proactive push from the network rather than me pulling this information from the device. That's very important. You can get turnaround of like milliseconds, so you get a real time notification and you may be able to react and correct the problem before it, it creates outages in your network, right? So those are some lessons learned on INT, and uh, you know, we, uh, we, we put it together as a sprint, smartable program of real-time INT, because those are things that you need to take in account and in mind if you want to implement this in a production network. So, uh, a bit of like more details here. I mean, we talk about programmability. This is an example of an INT program uh, that, that is used to instrument uh, telemetry on the switches and collect hop ID and timestamp, so transit latency. We have reference uh, uh, programs in P4 as part of the P4 spec that are posted on p4.org. So we'll, we'll find some reference programs there. And, uh, and the other things I want to point out is this solution can be deployed in Brownfield. The metadata can be instrumented in ways deep into the packet, for example, as after the layer four headers. So it looks like payload. Any legacy device will just transfer the information over. So it can be deployed in an environment where your spines are not INT capable, right? Even if you have a single device, that single device can still generate telemetry data without you uh, worrying about the rest of the environment. So being brownfield is something that we built into the, uh, we thought about building into the architecture and the design of this. I, I mentioned about extending telemetry everywhere. And you know, we, uh, Tofino today, you know, if you look at Tofino and as a way of uh, kind of producing that telemetry data is available on different white box solutions, including OCP approved white box solutions. There are a number of OEM vendors also looking to implement this. So we, we think that going forward, this will become a very popular technology, right? And last but not least, we talk about the SmartNICs. Those are some of the SmartNIC vendors that have been implementing INT and we have been doing integration with. So you'll find them at our booth and uh, you can ask about it. Another thing is like once you have all this telemetry information, what do you do with, with it, right? So we, uh, thought about it, and we, we couldn't find any open source or commercially available solution out there. So we have a large team of software engineers, very smart people, so we thought about building something that customer could use. And that's the idea and the concept of uh, building a product like Deep Insight. And so Deep Insight, what it will do, it will digest the information coming out from this network, both INT 
and telemetry report information and create intelligent analytics. So now it will visualize, it has a full GUI so it can visualize things like microbursts, you know, path changes events, and a bunch of other information. And you can get that information from, from the switches and from the smart NICs. In fact, it's completely decoupled from the physical switches. It only relies on these physical switches sending telemetry report data in a specific format, right? So according to the specifications. And, and we answer the foreground to questions of telemetry. And this is something they can integrate in, in third party management solution because we have seen that customers don't like to replace their management tools. This tool, together with INT, does a very good job in uh, exposing the telemetry packet by packet, but you don't want that to replace the existing tool. So this will typically complement with existing management solutions. Some example of anomalies that you can detect are, you know, congested flow, packet drops. I think Alibaba was talking no more silent drops in the network, and that's very important. And then events related to performance issues. So that's pretty much it. Uh, I think that's what I wanted to cover. You know, thanks for your time. Open for questions. Maybe just one quick question, because then we're going to kind of move on to the next uh, speaker. Uh, so I had this one quick question about the deep insight. So uh, definitely it cannot handle the traffic at the line rate. So definitely it will be, you know, some, some, uh, some part of the line rate, right? So that uh, will, in, I mean, Definitely, you must have some trigger mechanism in the AC to XD. Just Absolutely. So that is one yeah. thing. My specific question was about the, I think I just saw machine learning there, right? So in machine learning, uh, I mean, do you use, uh, I mean, actually, first question is how much traffic, you know, your deep inside the maximum powerful system can actually handle? That is one question. And in machine learning, I mean, do you, uh, anomaly det detection, how do you actually de detect it? And then, um, take one question? yeah, I mean, uh, just, just, I'm to get is it composite? Okay, I mean, okay, maybe okay. I, I can answer in, yeah. in one. So, you know, thanks, great questions. So, uh, you are exactly spot on. You know, there is there are always limits in this in what this analytics tool can uh, can can digest. That's why it's important to go back on that sprint idea of scalable or smart programmable real time. And when I say smart, be able to have deduplication at the source rather than at the destination. These intelligent triggers means that the, that, that the telemetry you receive is just anomalies. It's not irrelevant data. If you have a microburst, 99.999% of the time, you don't receive a report. It's during that short microburst that you want to receive reports from the device. So that intelligent trigger helps a lot with the scale out. In terms of uh, information about the performance on deep inside, it's a scale out solution. You can go from 100,000 records per second to a million records per second. It depends on how many you know, uh, resources you use on the other side. Yeah. Thank you, guys. Please help me thank Roberto from Barefoot.